Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials with me, Martin Fist, joined as usual by Jill and Sean. Hello. Hi. Hi. And I'm actually physically in the same yes. space today, so to thank you, you for having me and uh, we'll get the kettle on here. Eh? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, definitely. Uh, right, we've got a busy programme, so lots to chat about today, and including a question from one of our listeners about seed sowing. Ah, and talking of seed sowing, we've got some royal themed uh, flowers you can be sowing at the moment, which Martin will tell you about shortly. And also, if you're itching to get out there, worried about your lawn despite the wet weather, again, Martin's got some good advice for you coming up on that. But before that, we've got a guest. I caught up with a friend. She's a horticulturist and a journalist, garden writer Karen Jimson from Leicestershire. And I asked her how she got started in horticulture. <laughs> Well, I suppose like most people, it started with home. And my grandparents had a small farm in Leicestershire. And my grandfather, Ted Fold, uh, grew all our own food. Um, so my earliest rem- memory of um, gardening is actually sitting, when I was about three, sitting on the warm soil uh, between rows of peas that were much smaller than me. And the joy of... Uh, bursting open a pea pod and eating the pea and um, I suppose gardening since then it's always been um, I've always been trying to get back to that moment of perfect happiness but um, when I was at school obviously I um, went to careers advice and I mentioned gardening and um, they were not very enthusiastic about it So I never pursued it at the time and actually I went into journalism to start with and I was a general news reporter and um, I I wrote about fashion. I was really a fish out of water. Although I could write, I was never really interested in famous people Mm. and uh, (laughs) celebrities. And I just seemed to get uh, into writing about famous people. But they would um, say, oh, you've got a very honest face. I'll tell you all my secrets, but don't tell anyone. And being the sort of person, that I, being the person that I was, I didn't tell their secrets to the world. But then two weeks later, someone else had got this exclusive out with all these secrets coming up. And they had to just say, well, Karen, didn't he tell you this? And I said, well, yes, he did. But he said not to tell anyone. Mm. <laughs> You're so too honest was, for a journalist, yeah. I really was. Uh, but no, I'm, when I had my children, I wanted to stay at home and look after them myself. And that's when I went to Brooksby College to study the horticulture, do the RHS qualifications. And um, my idea was to actually work for the gardening magazines from home. Um, but while I was there, I met a lady called Sue Blacksland who was teaching garden design. And um, she said, why don't you do this? You'll be able to put the two babies in wicker baskets underneath the drawing board. And when they sleep, when they go to sleep, you'll be able to get busy on the drawing board, drawing all your plans and you'll be in control of your life. And I did that. The children slept (laughs) in my office underneath my drawing board. And, I then I, I did that for 25 years. I created um, a head gardener role where I travelled from um, large gardens, sort of small estates really, uh, working with one or two full-time gardeners and um, detailing all the work for the whole year. And I loved every second of it. I just could not believe that I was being paid to work in glorious places. Which is wonderful to do, isn't it? When you're doing a job like that, it doesn't actually feel like work, does it? You know, because you're enjoying it so much. And and presumably then, this is all in Leicestershire because you still live in Leicestershire, don't you? So you were just travelling around, like like you said, travelling head gardener. And you'd see some amazing gardens, of course, when you were doing that, wouldn't you? Oh, you, you can imagine, um, you know, woodland gardens and um, gardens with sculpture, walled, walled gardens. Uh, they all uh, grew their own vegetables and uh, cut flowers. And I was also in charge of creating all the flowers for the house. So I would meet with the owners once a year and then they would tell me which dates they were going to be in residence and which dates they wanted the house and the garden to look 
fantastic for, you know, if they've got special visitors or um, say they've got a wedding or a special event. And we would all work together to make those dates, uh, the garden look fantastic for those dates. And I would also do all the floristry for the houses. And uh, all, every front door had to have uh, flower wreaths on them every week. Uh, it was great fun. And one of, one of the gardens that I worked at, actually, the owners lived abroad. So it was just really me, two gardeners and a housekeeper. And uh, the owners said that at lunchtime, anybody on the property working there uh, had to have a hot meal um, made from soup, from vegetables from the garden, you know, so not no expense, really. Uh, and it was amazing how many people turned up to clean the swimming pool <laughs> or do maintenance for the, uh, the greenhouses or maintenance for the glass houses and the garden room. And the window cleaner turned up. Everybody turned up at 12 o'clock. Mm. So it was great fun. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I, every second of it. I would it. imagine you did, yes. And you obviously did that for quite a while as well. So you'll have built up lots of contacts. But the other thing is you also, everybody, you're always learning, aren't you, in gardening? So you're, you're increasing your knowledge. So what about your garden? Um, you know, because you've got quite a big garden, I think. And you've been there a number of years. Can you just describe what your garden's like, Karen? Well, we we, <laughs> we moved here in our 20s. I We bought the house and um, grounds from the farmer next door he built this bungalow for his mother to live in i think he saw us coming really because um you know we we, <laughs> we didn't get it for a very good price and there were all sorts of things wrong with the house um but the advantage of having living here was that we were able to buy an adjacent field and i think we paid an extra thousand pounds for an acre and um, he, I mean, once he'd agreed to that, he really didn't want to let us have it. <laughs> so it was when we bought the house, it was um, laid to wheat, growing wheat. And we had to wait until autumn until he'd harvested the field. And then the field was um, ploughed and then it was rolled and sowed with grass seed. And then um, from then on, we just cut out areas that we wanted uh, to create borders from from the from those from the grass grassed areas, and we had a grant from the council, and I think it might have been the Woodland Trust, and they gave us 260 um, sapling trees, and the whole family got together and we planted all these trees around the garden, and we planted them really close together, so they grew really quickly, and now we have a mature woodland area, um, and I have a small orchard and a vegetable plot with 10 plots that are 1.3 meters wide by three meters long with little paths all around them uh, so i never have to walk on the soil and i also have a 20 foot greenhouse that with second hand we bought second hand for 260 pounds and then a second hand polytunnel uh, that we bought from a very cheaply when a garden center was closing down and most of my stuff is actually grown in containers and the rest of the garden is, has turned out to be shady woodland. Mm, which sounds lovely. And I've, I've never been, but I've seen quite a lot of photographs on social media. And it is that lovely woodland garden, which I think I've always wanted a woodland garden. Where we lived in Nottinghamshire, when we had the nursery, we were, we were creating a bit of a woodland garden. But uh, we've not, we don't live there anymore, of course, now. But I've, I've always thought a woodland garden would be lovely. Whatever time of the year, it's nice to walk through a woodland. So what we'll do, we'll take a little break. We'll come back to you, Karen, because I want you to tell us a bit about the other work you do and the blog that you started, which is very popular. So uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. Is that the woodland garden, the birch trees you had up in North Yorkshire? Is that the one? I guess, do you miss that garden? Yes, we do miss the garden. I mean, we spent a lot of years creating that and it, we'd been there f nearly 15 years. So by the time we left, some of the trees and the shrubs and the borders were starting to really fill out and mature. But we did. You're right. We had that little copse of birch there, yeah. Jack Monty yeah. I, which made a little mini woodland. But we also, previous to that, when we were in Nottinghamshire, if you remember, we had where well, we had the old nursery. Oh, we had, yeah. oh, uh, I don't know, be about a quarter of an acre of woodland that we planted. Uh, and I do love being in a woodland. It's just so nice. What we ought to point out, 
Marvellous <laughs> today is that we've got to get an extra guest with us <laughs> in our little mini studio. We've got your dog, Marley, who's sitting listening <laughs> to every Hi, word we say. Hello, Marley. <laughs> he loves the woodland as well. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Imagine. He, does. he yes. likes the tree. <laughs> They're just relaxing and peaceful, aren't they, in a woodland? I just I just love it. I feel safe and enclosed in yeah, a woodland. Yeah, you see, I don't like them when they're too dense mm. and with too much canopy because I that makes me a bit scared. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, I quite like an open woodland, but mm. yeah. No. Mm. Well, we'll see what we're going to create here. You, you've got quite a few trees ready to plant in the garden. I suspect we've got too many. Yeah, I'm waiting to see this queue of trees. We mm. mentioned it before in the podcast. Yes. I'm here in person today, so yeah. <laughs> and I've got a list of uh, recipes you can uh, try out on me, yeah. uh, seedlings you're going to pass on. <laughs> and I'm going to go and have a look at the trees. We'll pop some pictures on Instagram. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, good good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had a question, haven't we, Jill? We have, yes, and a compliment as well. This is from Jane, um, who is in Leicestershire, and she says, Hi, Martin and the team. I really enjoy your videos and the podcasts are great to listen to on a Sunday evening. Uh, but my question is about sowing seeds outside. Some seed packets say they can be directly sown outside into a prepared bed. Could I sow directly into pots instead and leave the pots outside to germinate and then pot on into larger containers? With most you can do. I mean, we don't know whether you're talking about flowers here or or vegetables, but with most seeds, you can start them off in containers, whether it's a seed tray or small pots, uh, and then gradually pot them up into bigger pots. Um, So, yeah, lots of flowers you could start that way. If you could did a few hardy annuals, you could sow them into pots instead of the garden. Uh, Most vegetables, you can grow pretty much anything in pots. So, yeah, the answer is yes, you can. Are they more prone to frost if they were sitting in a pot on the top of the surface or not not really i mean i still wouldn't sow them any earlier i mean if it, if it's um you know if you these are seeds that you would normally sow directly in the garden look on the seed packet and it will give you a, a guide as to when you can sow them you can still sow them outside in pots at that time if anything it's always better i think to go a little bit later in the season when it is warmer because seeds germinate so much faster and they catch up i was having this conversation recently with one of the the vegetable gardens at harlow car when i was up there and they say you know we're never in a rush to sow so later because the warm weather means things catch up and obviously those seed packets have to be I wouldn't say optimistic, mm. but they have to kind of cover a lot of conditions. I mean, I saw someone talking about sowing parsnips the other day. Well, it depends where you live, Sean. I mean, certainly we're, we're in sort of, you know, the middle of the country, East Midlands. I normally sow mine early April. Uh, Harlow Car, they wait till early to mid-April up in Yorkshire. If you were down very, very mild in the south i would start maybe early march time but they need the warmth and if they haven't got the warmth if i sow them now in our wet cold soil they're just going to sit there and sulk and there's more chance they will rot off uh before they germinate fantastic and uh, just quickly if anyone out there has a question for martin info at potsandtrials.com just drop us an email um we've had a few emails this week we had um somebody saying that they really enjoyed last week's uh, royal parks podcast mm. so mm. thank you for that we love to hear from you and also obviously if you've got the chance to drop us a quick review on your podcast app of choice that really helps the podcast spread to more people doesn't it Mm. Mm. I'm still weird waiting to hear from the palace on their feedback <laughs> on last week's podcast, but I'm, I keep checking my emails and nothing so far. Mm. Well, in the meantime, shall we get back to Karen? OK. So lots of people know you, Karen, because you do a blog and you've been doing a blog for a number of years now. So how, how did that come about? And tell us, you know, what the blog is about so that if anybody hasn't seen it, they can get on to it. Mm. Well, it's uh, called Bramble Garden, and I started it six years ago, and um, I'll be absolutely honest, the reason I started it was um, I had some abdominal surgery, and uh, I was really ill for a whole year, and in the middle of the year, I got sepsis, and I really had a bit of a fight on my hands to get over it, and I, my children were still in their 20s then, and I thought, I can't die yet. I've not left them all the instructions for life. <laughs> and so I started I started writing the blog because I thought that if I died, they'd have something to look back on and they would see my views on life mm. and the instructions for growing stuff. I thought I got all in a panic that they might starve to death and not be able to feed themselves. And I started writing instructions on growing things. And um, yeah, that, that's how it all started, really. 
Um, and then, oh, luckily for me, after a year, I I I did I, I recovered, and um, sadly, then my mother-in-law um, she told us that she got dementia, and I started them writing in the blog all about growing flowers for my mother-in-law Joan um, because she was my best friend and she was someone who always had my back. It's just wonderful to have someone who's always on your side, mm. isn't it? Yeah. And um, she was just, she was a wonderful mother and she just really cared about her family. Um, and, you know, all the children had little knitted hats and little jacket, knit, uh, knitted jackets. And um, she did flower arranging for uh, Cosby Chapel, Methodist Chapel, for um, well, 65 years. And flower arranging was something we had in common. So when she started um, forgetting who we were, I thought I could just hang on to her by taking flowers from my garden and arranging them with her. And for a number of years, I just went round the garden, gathered lots of twigs, gathered lots of anything that was in flower and took big bunches to Joan and we would then spend the day um, separating them all out and uh, putting vases in all the windows and then one day when I went I noticed that she left the flowers in the big bunch and she didn't um, arrange them and that was she'd just forgotten how to do it mm. and it was so sad and um, and I just felt terrible that that was something that she really loved doing and Alzheimer's and dementia, it steals people's joy mm. of life. And it's so painful to watch, you know. And it lasts for years and years. And they're on this journey. And you're with them. The whole family is trying to find things to make life better for them. And in my case, um, flowers was, was the only thing I could think of. Um, and it did. It was interesting because we eventually... She just knew me as the girl that brought flowers. Right. She didn't know that I'd been married to her son for 30 years. And um, I remember exactly the moment when she forgot my name. Um, but she remembered all the names of the flowers in the bouquet that I got. Right, yeah. And I'm sure, you know, the fact that you did that for a number of years before she forgot how to arrange them, she will have got a lot of joy and happiness out of getting that bunch of foliage and flowers and doing something with it. I'm sure it's things like that and remembering the names of them will have gone back a long way with her, wouldn't it? So it's, Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah she, she, I mean, she, at the end, I mean, you know, she, she couldn't, um, it, it, it's so devastating that, um, you know, she couldn't even make a cup of tea. She couldn't work out, you know, the elements of making a cup of tea, you know, that you needed milk, tea leaves and mm. hot water. And she kept putting the kettle onto the cooker and we had three times it um, was in flames, you know, burst into flames. It, it was devastating for all of us. And, I, you know, I'd heard for years about um, horticulture um, being good for your mental health and, uh, you know, raising, lifting your mood. And I never in a million years thought that it would be appropriate mm. um, for me because I'd always been able to solve everyone's problems people you know come to me um to and i can usually solve all sorts of problems but this was just an unsolvable problem mm. and um you know she she but the flowers did help yeah and in the, there was so many people coming to the house you know when you've got a relative who's ill uh, there's there's doctors nurses and meals on wheels and everything coming to the house and in the end the weekly flowers I'm sure she enjoyed them because the house looked wonderful mm. with all the flowers, you know, all these vases of flowers all over the house. But it helped me because it gave me something positive to do. Yeah. To, to, and I wrote about it on the blog and it seemed to help other people as well. Yeah. Now, I mean, I don't know anybody who's not going through something at the moment. Well, that's right. And the fact you've shared your experiences, because, you know, a bunch of flowers is a great way to cheer somebody up, isn't it? Whether they arrange them or you just give them to them arranged. So I think that's a really lovely story. And, and you, you still, to this day, do regular flowers is for your mum, I think, isn't it? You, I, you're often saying, you know, I've seen on... Um, on Facebook or, or Twitter where you've picked a bunch of flowers out the garden, whatever the time of the year you can find something to take to your mum as a lovely gift. Yeah, absolutely. My mum, uh, again, she's 
I've been very lucky because I've got wonderful, I had a wonderful mother-in-law and now I've got also got a fantastic mother who's always been um, really, really supportive of me and everything I've done. Um, but she now has got to the stage where um, she can't come and visit quite as often as she used to. So now every Sunday I take flowers from my garden and it's the way of sh sharing my garden with mm. her. I mean, I run around the garden pick um you know it's the pussy willows or the catkins it's um it, it gives her a flavor of what i'm growing here and um and, and and now so now i do write about that as well yeah i think that's a lovely thing to do you know it doesn't have to be an expensive bunch of flowers from a shop it can just be some foliage and like you say the catkins and the pussy willow and and a few flowers i think are more meaningful sometimes than a bunch of flowers that you buy so yeah, um, that's really lovely. Now, you also are very well known on BBC Radio Leicester, aren't you, of course, because you've been one of the gardeners there for a number of years. So how did that all come about? Oh, I can't quite remember how. Um, oh, I think I was at a village hall once and they came to do a live uh, recording and um, they uh, they asked me a few questions and they said, would you like to do this? And I said, yes. And they said, well, come to the studio. And I thought they wanted me to actually answer the phones and, um, you know, be a back room sort of person, answering the horticultural questions in the back room, so to speak. And when I, first time I went to Radio Leicester, they said, oh, sit in that room, put the headphones on, <laughs> and we're going live in two minutes. And uh, it was a terrible shock. And in fact, I was so nervous. I mean, it doesn't bother me now, but... I was so nervous that my knees were shaking. And uh, the presenter is A.D. Damon, and he said, Karen, he said, it sounds like there's rats in the studio. <laughs> Sit still. And, of course, A.D. was a nurseryman, wasn't he? So A.D. knows his subject as well, yeah. He does. He, his, his family still got a nursery, yeah. I believe, in Leicestershire. Uh, and then the headphones didn't fit, and I was messing around with the headphones, and he says, sounds like you've got knits. <laughs> <laughs> so when their headphones are always size enormous size they never fit small heads <laughs> anyway um so i've been doing it for about oh it must be 20 years on and off and then regularly for about 10 years um and i still again it's i think with horticulture um you you can't know everything and the good thing about gardeners is that there are so many people willing to share mm. all the knowledge that they've got and that's what still excites me is that I've got loads more to learn and um, and and I don't mind passing that on to everybody else. Yeah, you know, that's I've... part of the joy of gardening is to share what you know. It is, yeah, I, I totally agree. It's nice to pass that knowledge on, but it's also nice to learn at the same time off other people, isn't it? And it all goes around. And if, if we don't pass it on, a lot of it will sort of just die out, really. So it's mm. uh, all these little tips that as, as older gardeners have got. So, Karen, been fascinating. You've got a lovely life that you've created from being your journalist to being your, your travelling head gardener and your blog. And your garden sounds wonderful, your acre with your woodland garden. Um, so it does sound wonderful. How can people follow you if they want to follow you? What 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 are you on? Are you, do you do Instagram as well? Tell us what you're on so people can follow. Mm -hmm. Well, the blog's called bramblegarden.com and Instagram, uh, it's Karen Jimson one and I'm on Twitter, which is at kjimson. OK, so you can follow Karen on any of those and she posts regularly lots of gardening snippets, lots of lovely advice. Karen, thank you very much for being our guest today. Oh, I've loved talking to you, Martin. Thanks for inviting me. Well, what we'll do in the summer, I'll come down and have a look at the garden as well. <laughs> All right, I'll better sweep up before you come. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. lovely that Karen has those memories for her mother-in-law you know just such a, a good activity to do to to take in some flowers for her to just to share that with her that's that's lovely mm. really and, nice. and Karen is a very very caring person mm. I've known her a few years and she mm. comes across as a, a really genuine caring 
person. Yeah. And a very good gardener as well, I must say that as well. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Well, she also, what she didn't mention was, although she does the blog uh, called Bramble Garden, she also writes for Garden News, doesn't she? Which is a weekly gardening She subject. does. She does a little recipe uh, every week mm. um, with things that you can grow in the garden. Mm. So, yes, if you want those, get them off, off, off the blog or get Garden News. Mm. Yeah, and listening to the fact that she is on Radio Leicester with A.D. Damon. Well, A.D. used to do some um, gardening uh, filming for the BBC as well. He did. he did. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, and yeah. Uh, it, we he got into chilies at one point. We need to chili get him, jam. I think he's doing chili jam. He was doing wasn't chili it? jam mm. and growing chilies. Yeah, maybe it, we need uh, to get him on the podcast to talk about best way to get your chilies uh, sorted. And yeah, he yeah. likes a hot chilli if I remember rightly. Yeah. So yes, good old AD. <laughs> yeah. I've got a few jobs to be doing in the garden as well. Okay. So because uh, I need to get you busy in the garden. Yes, you fish, do. I really do. <laughs> and as we've got Sean here the, today, oh, yes. we yes. could get a few extra yeah. spades. Yeah. Well, it, it is. I did actually manage uh, a couple of days ago to actually give the lawn its first cut of the season. It's still quite wet. Mm. And I know a lot of people uh, are saying they can't mow yet because the ground is too wet and too soft. But when you can walk on it without it feeling squelchy and sinking, then you're normally safe. Just be careful. Uh, and I've not cut it short. I've literally just taken the top off because it's been mild even though we've had frost the last week, the soil is warming up because of the mild weather before and the grass is growing. So I'll just take the top off. It just slows it down a little bit, but it just stops it getting too long and clumpy. So it's one for you to do, Sean, when you get back to and Nottingham. also, actually, we've got quite a lot of uh, twigs and sticks that have come down the storms from the birch tree, so the mower mm-hmm. will pick those. Well, <laughs> well. It, yes, I mean, it will if they're small, but if they're big ones, then I would always advise people just get the lawn rake out, just to yep. rake them off so you don't do any damage to it. Um, I've also sown the sweet peas. Um, some people sow them in the autumn. Um, I've done all different ways over the years, but I've, I've done them this week in pots. We've got some lovely sweet peas from King's that they've sent us. So I've done them in small pots, 10 seeds in a pot. And then when those seedlings are two or three inches tall, they'll be potted up individually. So we'll get lovely strong plants to put out into the garden end of April And what time. colours have we gone for this um, year? There's one called, um, um, I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> there's, uh, you remember? I think there's, there's, well, there's one called Coronation, King's Coronation. Right. And then there's Is another one. Is that red, one, white and blue? No. Okay. There's, and there's another one called something to do with the coronation and i can't remember what it's it definitely is definitely a royal theme of there is on those <laughs> yeah. one of them is a lilac-y color one of them is said very unusual it's got like a burnt orange so that, i think they've oh, sent yeah. that one just something different but then there's another one called jilly oh um oh, nice. spelt your way as well oh, good. with a j um which is a lovely cream one got long stems so oh, good awesome. exhibition ones so i thought that's for you. Oh, great. Very oh, nice. There you Lovely. go. And actually, I think we've got a Sweet Pea video from last year that if mm. people want to check out, they can go over to YouTube and have a look. We'll put the link in the show notes. Yeah, because you always say, do you scrape the seed a little bit or do you soak it before you plant? Well, a bit of both. I've tried mm. them all. I've tried using a bit of sandpaper to break the hard coat down. I've tried chipping it with a knife. You only I've take a little soaking bit off, it. You? Yes, but this, mm. these, I didn't do anything with these because some people say, you don't need to. So I've just, these look really plump, healthy mm. seeds. So I've put them in. Uh, they're going to take a couple of weeks to come through, but I'm sure we'll get a good germination with them. Good. Um, I'm doing a bit of prepping in the veg plot. As I said, I'm not doing any sowing outside yet. I think it's too cold and too wet. But I'm <clears throat> just tickling the soil over. There's a few weeds starting to come, which is always a good sign when you get the odd weed because that tells you the soil is warming up. I'm mixing in a bit of mulch just to get it ready. Um, the, the bulk of the sowing I do will, won't be done until April, to be fair. Uh, and then finally, um, I'm going to start doing quite a bit of pruning. March is a time when we do a lot of pruning in the mm. garden. There's going to be the roses. We've got, you know, dogwoods, shrubs need pruning. That's anything that needs a spring prune. March is when we tend to do it. So I'm just making sure my secretaires are sharp, clean and sharp, ready for action. Nothing worse than getting your secretaires out and they're blunt and you can't cut with them. So get them nice and sharp. And then when the weather's fine, you can get out there and do some pruning. Well, our, one of our recent Pots and Trowels videos is um, cutting down the raspberries, the autumn raspberries, isn't it? It is. That's right. It is. That's the one that's out at the moment. It's the one that's out at the moment. So, yes, I'd forgotten about that one. Well done, Mrs. Fish. <laughs> It's a good job you two are here with me, isn't it? Oh, is it coffee time? Oh, I'm ready for a lie down. I'm talking that. of pruning last week's video is about tidying up your herbaceous border. So if you do go and check that video out as well. As, as usual, all the video links are on potsandtrials.com or you can just go to our YouTube channel. All the links are in the show notes. 
And remember, drop us an email uh, just to say hi if you want. But yeah, if you've got a question, a gardening question for Martin, definitely not one for me. Or <laughs> maybe a, a recipe question for Jill, um, definitely again, not one for me. Um, or a question about Marley, who is at the moment pawing at the back door. Yeah. He wants to go and um, yes. have a play. Let's go check out those trees. Exactly, yes. Go and water them. And we'll be back next week, won't we? We, we will. will. See you then. Bye bye. Watch the videos on YouTube or Facebook, follow us on Instagram, Twitter or X and subscribe to the podcast and never miss a thing. For more information, go to potsandtrials.com.